Ed from EHCC on behalf of TEC, and today's topic is going to be flow hoods. Taking measurements with a flow hood onto itself is a very simple process. It really consists of covering the opening, pushing a button, and reading a number. A powered flow hood with its ability to correct for insertion loss, which is nothing more than when you stick the flow hood over the intentional hole in the duct system, it, it restricts the airflow. A powered flow hood has the ability to significantly reduce or eliminate that insertion loss. But when we use a passive flow hood, the insertion loss creates a bigger margin of error. One of the things that I wish I knew a long time ago was that the measurement on the return ends up being more accurate than the measurement on the supply. So everything that we talk about in today's lesson is going to revolve around taking the measurements on a return. So as it says up on the first bullet point that if we have multiple returns, the powered flow hood is going to be our best bet. If we have one large return that the powered flow hood doesn't have the capacity to measure, well, then I think it's kind of obvious that a passive flow hood would be the way to go. So the steps are bullet pointed as well as shown in photographs. Steve in the second photograph is covering the return grill that you see in the top photo. And the bottom photo is the proverbial cover the hole, push the button, get a reading. If we have multiple returns, we're going to take those multiple readings and add them together to get our total airflow. I briefly touched on the idea of insertion loss. This photograph right here is the TEC lab where some very precise instruments were used to measure how well various makes and models of flow hoods compared. So why do we wanna focus solely on the return? Well, it comes back to that previous slide where we saw the lab at TEC, where various makes and models were tested on supply registers or supply outlets. I want results that are single digit numbers and the, obviously the lower the better because we're always gonna seek those repeatable measurements. We can get those better numbers when we measure the flow through the return. So it really comes down to what's recommended and total airflow if that's what we seek, testing through the returns is going to be what I'll choose each and every time. So the pros of a flow hood, uh, good accuracy, uh, especially in the powered models. They're recognized by all the organizations that are going to grade our installations. The cons, cost. There are other problems such as leaky ductwork doesn't get picked up and uh, whether or not the flow hood that we're using has enough capacity for single return systems and different things like that. Uh, and one of the things I wanna point out that's not listed in the cons and there's several tools that we work with as HVAC people that need to come in the house at night and a flow hood is one of them. I'm talking about the fluctuations in temperature can affect that flow hoods ability to give us quality readings. So it's another one of those things to take into a consideration. So with that, I am gonna hand it off to uh, Bill Spohn from True Tech Tools, and he's gonna share some quick tips and some tool options for you. Hope to see you guys soon. Hey, thank you, Ed, for a great handoff. So I'm gonna give you a couple of quick tips here on measuring airflow with a flow hood. Now, to get accurate readings, you want to measure returns only. This is for residential applications mainly. If you work 
mostly with larger single returns, you'll probably need a bolometer or a passive flow hood to reach the correct flow levels that you need to for the application that you're, you're taking the testing on. Now, if you're working mostly with multiple returns, a power flow hood is also a great, is really the, probably the, one of the better ways to do it because you're going to have lower flows if these multiple returns. And you also have the benefit of working, uh, working better, more accommodating for supply registers in different locations, being a little bit more compact of a unit. And you can also use it to support any kind of air balancing work for, on a supply basis too. Some of the tool and equipment options you have available, places like TrueTech Tools. And by the way, the prices here are list prices. You can often get these for a little bit less. And these are list prices circa January 2021. The ASA and FlowFinder, which is distributed by RetroTech and TrueTech Tools. Uh, the FlowFinder Mark II is a really great powered flow hood, but it has a limitation on its maximum capacity. Uh, it's good for total airflow measurement. Uh, it's got a data logging function in it, an SD card. It's got a color display, a really nice little unit, really compact, uh, lightweight, portable. And it's also suitable for doing supply air balancing. The TSA Elnor uh, EBT731 is good for higher flow rates, up to about 2,500 CFM, but it's not suitable really for lower flow rates as you saw in some of the earlier parts of the video. Now, this is a passive flow hood, and it's suitable for higher flows, um, but it has that kind of impact of insertion loss and accuracy and the way it aligns on a register that can, can sometimes throw off its ability to make a correct reading um, when you're doing so many different kinds of residential applications, probably best for, con for commercial. Uh, Testo 420 has it's a really nice unit, a little bit less money, has a great little uh, temperature, humidity, pressure, barometric pressure measuring device that you can kind of snap out from it, uh, the 20, the 420 manometer part um, that can also be used for other applications. So it's a pretty good multifunctional device. There's also the Elnor low flow bolometer, it goes up to 500 CFM, similar kind of limitation as the flow finder. Um, that uh, does not, it's not a powered hood, it's also it's a passive hood. Then there's the Tech Flow Blaster, which is now out of production, but that was a great type of device. Um, you can actually create some of your own uh, types of uh, powered flow hoods by using a blower door or a duct leakage tester. There's a lot of good advice out there on that. Again, though, you kind of take in all that. Uh, that reliability and um, uh, the need for accuracy into your own hands. Um, that That's the really how the, the Tech Flowbuster as a product came out, how that was developed. So uh, we hope you enjoyed listening to this little uh, video training session uh, from TEC, sponsored by TEC, Steve Rogers and Bill Graber, along with that doing the training part from the Eastern Heating Cooling Council and myself talking about the um, measuring with flow hoods. And we have some more information on the TEC Airflow homepage to get step-by-step uh, -step instructions, training, and more information. Uh, so you can kind of work through and get all this, get this down and, and be doing better work out there. So I want to thank you for listening again to the flow hood overview. And we hope to uh, have you come back again, listen to another video. Um, replay these things as much as you need to really get down the basics of the science and be doing better work for yourself, uh, for your customer, and for your employer. Thanks again for listening. Hope to see you back again next time.